Good morning, gents. Good morning, folks. Happy Star Wars Day, May the 4th. So, I've been absent from work for a day. Bank holiday Monday yesterday. And Gemma and I went to have a look at what could possibly be a new business venture for us. More about that in the coming weeks. I know I don't like to, I don't like to leave cliffhangers. Good morning, but uh, on this occasion, I'm going to have to. Cause it might not happen. I'm sure it will. So yeah, in this morning, first thing we're going to check on is obviously our beers. So these have been happily fermenting for the past few days, and I believe. I've got a delivery coming between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. That's handy to know. Oh, I can hear him breathing. But yes, I believe that one or two of them are nearly finished. But the green tilt that I've got in the mango, I think, has stopped transmitting. So we've got the orange, which I believe is this one, 10.23, the Philly Sour. Still got a little bit of a ways to go. And I think the black one, the black tilt is in here and that's at 10.21. Uh, so yes, looks like the Mango IPA, which has got the green tilt in it, isn't telling me any details anymore. So we'll have to maybe give it a wobble, see what's happened to it, I don't know. Maybe it can't get through the, maybe the signal can't get through the jacket don't know. That feels nice and toasty and warm anyway. So the temperatures are exactly where I want them to be. 22 degrees, 20 degrees and 20 degrees. So that's perfect. I can hear the airlock is letting a little bit of gas out so it's still going. So I don't think we're quite at the stage yet to be adding the fruit to these beers. So we'll probably wait another day or so. Although I will be investigating as to why our green tilt here isn't showing any data. But looking at this, oh, that's the takeoff ball. Let's have a look. So looking in there, you can clearly see that fermentation has not finished. This was a big beer though. It's going up around 1068 or something like that. So we'll just leave it and let it do its thing. And then also, shall we unzip and have a look in in the Kvirk lager? Come on now. The big reveal. Oh, again. Looks to me like we do have a Krausen ring. Feels nice, nice temperature. Bit of warmth coming off the blanket, just enough for ambient. I'm really pleased actually how all of this has managed to work. So well we may as well we may as well pan over. In fact we may have to jump across and have a look at the Philly Sour. That belt's a bit tight. Oh wow. Look at the colour of that. That's bright. It's very pale indeed. Again, got a little Krausen ring on there. Not too much, but I do like the colour of that one. That's looking very promising indeed. So yeah, a few more days I think we'll wait and uh, we'll take it from there. Oh my God, it's freezing in here today. So today is uh, May the 5th and we need to start moving forwards with these beers a little bit. The Philly Sour is at 10.21 still. It seems to have stalled a touch. So what I'm going to do is pull out a little bit of a sample reading and uh, test the pH, see if that pH has come down at all from when we uh, put it into the FV and give it a little taste. And if it's all right, we're going to go and add the raspberry to it in primary because it's still on the yeast 
and I want that yeast to ferment this fruit and hopefully that will bring the final gravity down a little bit as well because it's uh, it's a very simple sugar in the fruit so first thing to do is sanitize a pipe and let's take a little a little sample out the top of the FV under pressure so we're just taking a sample out with the old uh, dipperoo with the old uh, party tap <laughs> and this is what she looks like so Gemma and I have just had a taste Gemma and I, not Gemma and I and uh, well we think it's really nice it's not quite as sour as like the, the Haribo's or fizzy cola bottles kind of sour citric acid style it's still got a multi note to the back of it um, but it's definitely there it's got like that fizzy fizzy knickers kind of thing going on hey Jen maybe not so I think we're gonna go and put the raspberry into that and let it go I took a pH reading it's at 3.05 mm. I think that's really worked quite well so yeah very very pleased 3.05 I can't see the raspberries doing any damage to that at all that is a really good base so it's not like we're starting out somewhere that's probably you know we're unsure I think that's solid let's go for it right so this is the raspberry puree that we're going to be adding to the fermenter I'll be popping the top off and we'll be pouring this in I'm not too concerned about oxidation I could purge it if I wanted to but I don't think we're going to go to that degree of course you've got to remember we're trying to do something that we can replicate on the large kit and I couldn't do a pressure transfer on the large kit anyway so there's no point doing it on here I'm also intrigued to see what this stuff tastes like so I'll be pouring a little bit of this into a glass might as well pop it into all right it's got a seal on the inside as well I don't want to really shove my finger in there just in case I introduce any any bacteria or anything so I'm gonna just go and get a pair of pliers and sanitize them and we'll pop it open with that and then come back there we go So this is, wow, that's the puree on its own and that is extremely thick, like really really thick. So I have to remember I've also got to put some fructzyme, which is a pectic enzyme in with this as well to help down, break down any pectin that's in the fruit. So let's try this on its Todd. Mmm. That's excellent. So let's have a little bit. You know what? I'm going to just fill this up a little bit more. There because I think I'm going to enjoy this. Right, let's put some raspberry in there. That might be enough. Give it a whiz around. Oh yeah, it's definitely got a bit of colour now. I think that's going to pick up the colour beautifully when it's all in. Oh yeah, it's breaking up nicely. So, it's a lot pinker than that, than what it's showing you on the... Uh, on the camera the lights not catching this quite right maybe it's because there's some light from above that's closer that's closer to what I'm seeing if I'm looking through the viewfinder there 
Oh wow. Completely changed the dynamic. That is wonderful. I'm very pleased. Let's go and put six litres in. So next we've got the Mango Sorbet IPA. Well what do you think to the colour? I think we're looking smashing, absolutely smashing. Right, this has got the verdant yeast in it. I'm getting a big punch of orange on the nose off of that. Definitely citrus, tropical fruits. Peach, pineapple. Oh, it gets nicer the more you get into it, actually. Let's have a taste. A little bit of heat from the alcohol there. Plenty of sweetness still. We did put lactose in this beer, though. The body's there. It's very fruit juice like. It's not got a bitterness really to speak of. That is bloody gorgeous to be honest. Right, so this is still at 10, 18, 10, 19, which is where I think it might finish out at. It's bubbling a, a tiny, tiny amount of the blow off tube. But for all intents and purposes, I think this beer is finished. So I'm just going to let Gemma have a go. And then uh, we'll pop a bit of the mango puree in there. We'll see how that enhances the flavour. So we've all had a taste of that and we all think it's on the money. So I'm just going to, in fact, I'll do the mango first. I'm going to add a little bit of... The mango puree from Keylink in Sheffield. This is what they call aseptic puree, so it's been uh, kind of pasteurised and then filled into these these uh, Tetra Pak containers. These are Elo Pak actually, because they're meant to be emission, low emission or emission free uh, packaging. So this is the brand Rava Fruit. All these purees contain 10% glucose. So let's get some of the beer on the fruit. Now straight away you can see the difference in colour. This is a much more fruit juice-esque. It definitely looks like orange juice or mango juice now. Even brighter with the lid off. So let's have a smell. Yeah, the mango is definitely cut. Right. It's in the aroma now, whereas before it was perhaps a little bit more um, more tropical in terms of pineapple and peach was dominant, I thought, before. But this time, now I can smell the mango for sure. Mm. It's too sweet at the minute. That needs to ferment out, so I'm hoping the mango will ferment out and then that will dry the beer out as well. But that's too sweet at the moment. It's also going to have a hit of mosaic hops in there as well to help it on in terms of its tropicalness. So we're going to go for, um, let's have a look. On a 50 litre batch, we're chucking in 200 grams of mosaic. The hops in this beer were Galaxy, of course. So let's, uh, let's pass it around the group, see what they think. So, I'm ready to move forward with this one. We're going to put three millilitres of Fructzyme P into this 
batch of beer just to help break down any pectin that's in the fruit. So first things first, let's get rid of our sample tap, take that away. And then we need to degas the whole shebang. This one's had an attack of the crows and for sure it's right up to the top. I'm just gonna move all this stuff so I don't knock it over. Right, three mil of the fructzyme, the pectylase enzyme effectively is what this is. That's four, that's three. There we go, if you just wanna have a look at it. That's what it looks like. Looks like pish. It's not though. Honestly. I don't think it is anyway. If it is, someone's in trouble, aren't they? Right then. Let's get that popped in. As simple as that. And then we're going forwards with the mango. It's a little bit more of a difficult angle than what I had for the raspberry. So hopefully well, you don't see too many splashes. There we go. I can see it going in even if you can't. So you'll have to trust me. We've got six litres of this to go in. We're at 54 already, so that'll take us up to 60 litres. Which is the maximum. Actually, no, this is one of the all-rounders that was sent to me with the wrong sticker on. So there's actually more, there's actually less than 54 litres in there. So I'll do the rest of these, and then we'll come back, and we might have a little look at the Kvik lager. Right, excuse the noise, Gemma's just having a wee in the background. So we may as well go for it and have a little slurple of the Kolsch, no, the Kvik Pilsner or lager style beer. So this is still a little bit high. Uh, about 10.19 I think, but I'm just looking at the sheet now. Um, we're expecting it to drop to around 10, give or take, where are we? 10.09. So yeah, this is at, oh it's at 10.12 actually, so it's not too high, but it's a little higher than I would have wanted it to be. So let's just take a sample. I don't think there's actually anything I need to do to this beer. There's no dry hopping, I don't think, involved. Uh, no, just got to crash it when it's finished, so it's still bubbling away. We'll leave it to it. Now there it is. Even though we had to use extra pale malt, pale malt, uh, it's still come out at quite a light colour and that's acceptable for a, a, a Pilsner style, probably a bit lighter if you wanted to go for a lager style maybe. But I'm happy with that. So let's have a smell. So the big difference is it doesn't have that sulphury note that you'd kind of come to expect with maybe some lager yeasts or bottom fermenting yeast and that kind of thing. I've got you pointing in the right direction here, so it's a bit dark. Uh, it looks quite effervescent almost, must be a bit of pressure just on there, yeah there is a little bit of pressure on there. So 
On the nose, I'm getting a bit of a bready malt background come through. But there's an orange note to it. Definitely um, a citrusy, orange peely kind of note, which I'm assuming is going to have come from the Kuvert Voss. Yeah, definitely orangey. Almost. And the wheat as well. Is the wheat in there? No, it's 100% pale. Tastes a little bit wheaty, almost like a, um, a Hefeweizen of some type, uh, or a, like a, a hoe garden almost. I think I've got the bitterness right on this. It could probably go a few IBUs higher, actually. But that was what made the previous Pilsner that I made pretty much undrinkable. The IBUs were far too low, and that meant the sweetness was cloying. If that was cold and carbonated, I could drink that right now. And I'm still anticipating it's going to drop a few more percentage points on the gravity. So, another promising result from all three of these pilot kit beers. Get in.